What's up everyone? Long time no see. Hope you're all doing well. I'm doing uh, well, could be doing a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, it is the uh, Easter long weekend. We've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday that I've got off work. And it's quite a, uh, well, horrible, uh, horrible weather day. So I thought, what better way than to do a video? And of course, as you can see from the title, in this video, I'm going to be doing a um, Easter weekend first watch movie marathon. Now, I haven't I've not done a kind of a movie marathon for a while. This isn't going to be like a, a full kind of like with skits and kind of uh, about talking about things and stuff like that. It's just going to be straight down the line, kind of me watching movies and kind of um, for the first time and um, kind of giving my giving my thoughts on them. There are a couple of films that I'm planning to watch, but apart from that. Um, it's going to be kind of a spontaneous on what I do watch. Uh, I, said, I just feel like doing nothing today, and I thought, what the hell? And it'd be a good way to kind of get through some Blu-rays I haven't watched yet. That I've had for quite a while. Uh, I mean, the first one I'm going to be watching, I've had for more or less a year now, and I still haven't, still haven't watched it. So I thought, what, what the hell? I'll do kind of a, a big kind of movie marathon. Uh, we'd be spread off, spread across the uh, the four days. Uh, I mean, uh, one or two of the days I might not watch many films, but I kind of like film it as I go along. Really, uh, I do plan to watch as many as I can, uh, but I might kind of like do other things as well. Um, uh, but yeah, so I've been uh, suffering from crippling back pain and leg pain for the past few days. So I just want to kind of like take it easy. I'm not gonna, I'm not planning on going anywhere because it's like it's pissing it down with rain. Um, I'm going somewhere on Monday, but apart from that, until then, I don't plan to go out. Whether I will go out, I don't know, but uh, that's uh, my plan. So, uh, yeah, join me as I watch movies. It really is that simple. Now, the first movie I'm going to go for is, like I say, it's a Blu-ray I've had for a long, long time that I still, still haven't watched. I like the cast in it, um, uh, and that film is 30 minutes or less. Uh, yeah, big fan of uh, all the cast. Uh, Nick, Nick Swarton, I could take or leave, really. Uh, he's a bit too kind of, uh, just a bit too over the top at times. But apart from that, I really like the cast. Uh, Aziz Ansari is one of the one of the most underrated kind of comic actors, and it's really cool to uh, hopefully see him in hopefully a halfway decent movie. Uh, but yeah, looking forward to checking it out. Like I say, uh, I'll just be a bit, a bit of a comedy mood for the, uh, the first film out, so... Uh, yeah, so again, it's just basically going to be me kind of watching the film and uh, kind of giving my thoughts on it after I've watched it. Um, uh, so yeah, you could kind of say this is like an unofficial return of first watch. Um, not that I'm going to like carry it on every week or anything, but um, there you go. Yep, so the first movie will be 30 minutes or less. So yeah, that was the first film in my uh, Easter weekend uh, first watch movie marathon. That was 30 minutes or less. So basic story of this is, got Jesse Eisenberg and uh, Aziz Ansari has two friends. Jesse Eisenberg's character works at a, a pizza place. Uh, he's, he doesn't really enjoy his job, and then he gets uh, kind of kidnapped by two uh, criminals, uh, played by Danny McBride and Nick Swardson, who basically uh, force, the basically just kind of strap a bomb to him and force him to rob a bank in order to get some money for um, a hitman to kill uh, Danny McBride's father. And uh, it's kind of the... Uh, various uh, comic misadventures that ensue. But yeah, really, really enjoyed this one. It's a very kind of low-key movie. Uh, it's very short as well, but it moves at a brisk pace. It's only not even an hour and 25 minutes. And that's, in that's including credits. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it does suffer from that a little bit, like, like, a f like a few jokes too many that don't really hit, but there are a lot more kind of hits than misses, really. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Jesse Eisenberg is kind of... It's not exactly a role outside his comfort zone, really. Um, uh, yeah, Nick Swardson is a bit more subdued in this film. Um, he, as I say, he can just tend to get a bit kind of over the top, but he was all right in this. Uh, Dylan McBride as well. I do like him, but I'm not like uh, someone who say who's like who thinks he's like the funniest man ever. But I do, I do enjoy him. Uh, but yeah, really, really funny film. Got some great, actually, pretty good action scenes in there as well. Uh, I say it's very kind of, we're well not small, but kind of, I don't know, it's just kind of nothing too flashy. It's just a, sim it's, it's a simple story with some funny lines, um, a decent story. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, Ruben, Fle Ruben Fleischer, I, I always think that he, it's like when I first saw it, saw that he was um, directing that uh, film Gangster Squad, I was thinking, Really? A guy who's directed 
two films, and both of those were comedy films. He's gonna, he's gonna kind of like direct this like this gangster saga epic kind of thing. I'm like thinking, is that the best director to use? And um, as you probably guessed, that film was a complete flop. Nobody liked that film, which I, st I still haven't seen. But um, I was thinking, maybe he had two films, Zombieland. I think Zombieland was his first film, and this was his second. It's like then you're gonna make get him to direct a like a, a gangster film, really. But anyway. Uh, really good, uh, like I said, good action scenes. It was directed, you know, it was it was what it was. Uh, as as Ethan Sari, uh, even I mean, he can like he's one of those people that can well for me that can, he can like just read the phone book and I'll be laughing out loud. It's just, I don't know, it's just uh, his voice kind of makes me laugh more more than him himself. But uh, but yeah, really he really made me laugh in this, and everyone else did as well. Uh, really good job. Um, it's always good to see uh, Fred Ward in stuff nowadays. He's not in too much, too many things now. It's just 2011, I believe. So, uh, so yeah, really, really enjoyed it. It was written by um, uh, Michael Diliberti. Uh, but yeah, really, really funny. Uh, um, kind of co-produced by Ben Stiller. Um, I believe one of the uh, kind of the um, like the distributors. Like he's is he is his company. Uh, but yeah, really, really enjoyed it. Highly recommended. Uh, I'm definitely going to watch it again, so I'm definitely going to keep it. And uh, yeah, that was 30 minutes or less. Now, yeah, I have kind of uh, sometimes with these fil with uh, films in this marathon, I'm going to kind of uh, maybe if I if I watch a film, I kind of like I feel like watching an, a, a de another film. Uh, but sometimes I might kind of um, like not know what to watch. I might kind of uh, kind of uh, uh, kind of choose a choose a film kind of on the fly but uh, the next film I'm gonna watch is a um, a classic uh, action movie which I have I have I've seen the sequel but I've never seen the original and I've heard nothing but good things it's like a really kind of classic uh, action movie and uh, yeah let's see what it is so, yep yeah, here we are the second film of uh, the, this marathon and the second film of the day being uh, Friday and yeah so I've got the uh, the box set that this film is contained in I'm not going to, although I did say sequel before, so you probably kind of guess which one I'm talking about, uh, is the Die Hard Quadrilogy. But which film will I be watching? Hmm, let's have a think. Well, yeah, like I said, it, like I said, I've seen the sequel. Well, I didn't see... No, yeah, yeah, so that, that means that is kind of totally redundant now. Uh, you can probably guess uh, by what I said that I'm going to be watching Die Hard 1. That's right, I've never... Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I say that as the other one for the film fall out of the box. Uh, yeah, I have never seen this film, uh, believe it or not. Uh, very much looking forward to checking it out. I've heard it's like really, like incredibly good. I really did like uh, the sequel. I watched uh, a, 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 was it? No, I think it was last Christmas. No, I think not last Christmas. The Christmas before, I think. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to checking this one out. Um, it's one of those films that I've wanted to watch for ages. I just, I just never got round to it. But uh, yep, yeah, the second film of the day will be Die Hard. Yep, so that was Die Hard. Now, what more can I say that hasn't already been said? You got Bruce Willis as John McClane, you got Alan Rickman as Hans Gruber, you've got a building full of hostages, and you've got absolutely kick ass action scenes, great script, good story. Um, I love the fact that it's kind of it's, it's all set in one night, which I really, really like. I love those kind of movies. Either kind of one kind of situation movies, or, or kind of one uh, uh, kind of play, like if, if it's like, a, like in, in like one room or stuff, I love films like that. And this is a really, really good one. Um, it didn't have the um, kind of like instant classic status, which I hoped it would do. But I def definitely, definitely watch it again. It's definitely kind of one of, uh, I wouldn't say one of the best match movies I've ever seen, but it is very, very, very solid. I would definitely re revisit this sometime in the future. Uh, really like the all, all the characters. Hans Gruber was a really kind of strong villain, um, and uh, yeah, just, again, just what more can I say? Really, it's just great action. Like I said, um, the acting. Yeah, it does have those kind of. I don't remember what it was. Yeah, eight, it, yeah, it does have those kind of like eight late eighties, early nineties kind of uh, action movie things. It's like some of the sets uh, are quite kind of quite wobbly. I noticed a uh, kind of explosion kind of made one of the supposedly solid walls wobble quite a bit. And you've also got those things where it's like in the fight scenes, you can you can tell it's obviously the stunt guys, and it looks nothing like a uh, like the guys are actually like the, the actual actors. Uh, which is yeah, you, you can see that quite a bit, but it's kind of funny, you know. You can kind of forgive it because it is late eighties. Uh, the kind of the uh, limitations they had, obviously, it looks kind of 
um, movies like look a lot better now, but um, it has that kind of not cheesy factor, but that kind of um, I don't know. Even though it was a high budget, it's kind of that like low budget charm to it, which I really really liked. Uh, yeah, could have been maybe could have maybe done with being a little bit shorter. I mean, with credits, it's like uh, just under just under two and a quarter hours. It could have been like round it up to two hours. It would be a perfect film. Uh, not say that, that it's bad because it's a bit long. But um, I think if they kind of uh, trimmed a few scenes down, it would have been a little bit better. But uh, yeah, apart from that, highly recommended if you haven't seen it before. I'm pretty sure after uh, now I've seen it, I'm pretty sure every every person in the world has seen this movie now. Uh, so I've seen the sequel, watched it a couple, about a year and a half ago, or just a year and a half ago. And the obviously uh, Die Hard Four isn't well isn't very well received. Uh, With a Vengeance is uh, supposed to be, supposed to be really good as well. Uh, but yeah, definitely recommended, and I'll be definitely watching it again. So that is Die Hard. Now the uh, like I said before, I have I want to kind of watch movies. I sometimes kind of like get a feeling, get the feeling to watch kind of a specific a specific movie, and I'm uh, in a bit of an animation mood next. And uh, it's a film that I have heard nothing but high praise about, and I've heard the sequel is even better. And that film is How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah, so like I said, heard nothing but good things about this. People are saying it's like one of the best animated films ever made. It's like really, it's not just like a kids movie. Um, again, I love kind of animation, animations like that, uh, which kind of has the, uh, kind of gets the uh, balance right between kind of like uh, adult stuff and kind of uh, uh, kiddie stuff as well. And yeah, really, really looking forward to checking this one out. It's uh, nice and nice and short, in, short ish as well. It's uh, about an hour and 40 minutes, which uh, is kind of like the perfect length of a film for me. And uh, yeah, so next up will be How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah, this movie is fantastic. It's got thrilling action scenes, hilariously funny, great story, uh, great script, great characters. Just everything about this film is fantastic. Uh, I mean, even from like the, f the first kind of couple of minutes, I was laughing. I was uh, just in awe of kind of the animation and the kind of like the action scenes as well. So yeah, basic plot of this film is you've got like a kind of a fantastical world in a city called Burke and they kind of uh, it's like a Viking kind of village. And uh, whereas uh, some places might have uh, rabbits or rats, they have dragons. And basically, uh, they kind of uh, the Vikings kind of go after and try to kill dragons. And there's a, a little kid. Called, oh well, they kind of. Uh, Kind of a preteen uh, named Hiccup, who basically uh, captures and finds like a really rare dragon, and then through this dragon, kind of finds out the dragons are uh, not what people quite people think they are, and uh, kind of there's like uh, adventure and but but yeah, it's got great action scenes. Like I said, um, ca uh, voice casting this is great. You got Jay Baruchel as um, uh, Hiccup. You got people like uh, Jonah Hill, Chris Mintz Plass. Uh, what else you got? You got Gerard Butler, America Ferrera. Um, so just a really good voice cast. Did a really, <coughs> really good job. Really good job getting the uh, just, just, just the right voices for these uh, for these types of characters. But yeah, definitely believe if you haven't seen it, believe the hype. It is re it really is that good. And I've heard the second one is even better. Uh, so I'm definitely going to be seeking that out soon. Uh, but yeah, it, like I say, it's just a simple story. Um, just it's I don't know, it's just really great to watch some of the time the kind of the animation did look a bit a bit ragged at times whether that's kind of because the blu-ray quality is so good you kind of like see some of the some of the kind of frayed ends and the joins and stuff i'm not quite sure or maybe it's just it's i'm just not quite used to it because i don't really watch so many dreamworks kind of animation so i'm kind of used to more i guess i'm used to more um kind of defined animation really it's it's a bit kind of like ragged like i said uh, but yeah, really, really good. Definitely worth checking out if you haven't, if you haven't seen already. Um, yeah, not the only thing. I, the only other thing I can, can say about the film is just I think it's just thrilling. It's funny. It's uh, it's sad at times. You've got uh, some great kind of character development and a kind of a um, like character beats, which I really, really liked. Um, uh, good length as well. Um, not including credits, it is like uh, an, uh, basically an hour and a half exactly. Uh, with credits, it's a bit longer, obviously. Uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely highly recommended if you haven't seen it already. Uh, I don't know why I, why it's taken me this long to see this one, um, but it will not take that long to watch the second to see the second one. I'm gonna beg, borrow, or steal to see that film. Um, remember not steal, but uh, you know what I mean. But yeah, very highly recommended. See it if you haven't. Very, very, very good. 
So that was How to Train Your Dragon and I think this might be the uh, last film for today. Obviously like I said, um, I'm not going to be watching, so I'm just basically going to kind of film stuff when I do watch films, I'm not going to be watching them all the time, it's not like a 24 hour marathon or anything, it's just I will be kind of doing a little video every time I do watch a film, uh, but three films for today is probably my film, I mean I might watch one later on, it depends um, kind of on circumstances, but uh, yeah my back pain is re getting really bad now, uh, so I might actually kind of maybe sleep for a bit, but I'd, I'm not quite sure, but, um, but for now I'm done with the uh, films for today, but um, Yep, so it might be tomorrow, or obviously um, for this video it will be like in about f a few seconds, but uh, yeah, so that was probably it for today, like I said, but I might watch something else later, but um, yeah, I will see you uh, sometime. So yeah, welcome back to uh, a new film and a brand new day. That's right, it's actually Easter Sunday today. Um, I didn't watch any films yesterday, I had a bit of a, uh, a gaming day yesterday, uh, played through uh, Portal 2 again, uh, played some Arkham City, played some uh, Life is Strange, some uh, some other good stuff, so I didn't watch any movies yesterday, but uh going to watch maybe one or, one or two again today, uh, say so Easter Sunday, it is absolutely gorgeous outside, which is the perfect time to be sitting inside uh, watching movies, so uh, yeah. Yeah, so the next film I'm going to be watching in my uh, first watch movie marathon is a film that I only really kind of heard more things about after looking on um, uh, Blu-ray.com. It's a film I'd kind of heard of, but I never really kind of like seen any anyone talk about really. But it's a film that looks like it's um, going to be really interesting. It's kind of a, uh, a sci-fi uh, kind of uh, murder mystery kind of thing. And it is, now I don't, I try to explain it, it is Dark City. Now I don't, on the front it says director's cut, but on the back it says director's and theatrical cut, so I don't know which is which is right, whether it does have both cuts or just the director's cut, I'm not quite sure, but I will um, kind of have a look and then uh, kind of explain it all. But yeah, really good cast, we've got Rufus Sewell, um, Keeper Sutherland, uh, Richard O'Brien, uh, uh, William Hurt and uh, a few other people as well, Jennifer Connelly and all that, all that kind of stuff. But it looks like a really good kind of like, like I say, a sci-fi movie directed by from the director of um, The Crow and I Robot, Alex Proyas. Uh, so really looking forward to checking this one out. I've heard it's like kind of a, like a really kind of noir, like I say, kind of murder mystery kind of film. But it looks really, really, really interesting. I haven't watched any trailers. I, I only know the basic plot of uh, kind of someone being um, accused of a murder he didn't remember doing. Uh, but yeah, it looks like a really interesting one. And... Uh, yeah, so the next film we're watching will be Dark City. Yeah, I had a little look and it does uh, turn out that it does have both the uh, director's cut and the theatrical version. Now I'm going to go for the director's cut, I'm not sure if I should do, because I know some people can have like director's cut can mean like a completely different version of the film. Some people say that a theatrical cut of, of certain films are better than the director's cut. Some people say the director's cut is better than the theatrical one. But I'm going to go for the director's one for now and uh, I'll kind of like see if it's it's too kind of different or if it's very different and um, so yeah I will be checking out the director's cut version which I believe is the one that is 111 minutes uh, so yeah let's do it yeah so that was Dark City and that was an extremely extremely good film uh, <clears throat> yeah quick update I did actually look on uh, blu-ray.com and I, I found out that I was right the director's cut is the the best kind of version of this, of this film to watch apparently the uh, kind of theatrical cut gives away far too much kind of uh, far too early in the story and uh, yeah people just say that the kind of there's better scenes there's more kind of um, not exposition but kind of more more character kind of interactions and kind of uh, stuff like that so the director's cut is definitely the best one to watch yep so the plot is very basic got Rufus Sewell as a guy called John Murdoch who wakes up in a hotel room uh, there's a woman who's been murdered and basically these kind of these thing called the pale well we don't know exactly what they are but they're kind of like really kind of weird weird looking kind of bald dudes and uh, who are um, looking for this guy we don't know why there's also um, uh, William Hurt who plays uh, kind of this uh, this cop who's also on his trail and he kind of uh, finds out different things toward kind of like a little uh you know he finds out more about kind of what the world he lives in is like uh kind of in this uh throughout the throughout the film but yeah it's obvious um kind of um comparisons to blade runner uh personally for me 
I like this film more. I've only seen Blade, Blade Runner once and I wasn't kind of, I wasn't that blown away by it, but maybe if I see it again. Uh, but like whenever you, whenever you see kind of like uh, all the best kind of like sci-fi films, you always hear things like Blade Runner, Blade Runner. You never hear things like Dark City, Dark City, which is what you should be hearing. Uh, but yeah, really good story. Um, it, it wasn't too complicated. I do need to kind of uh, iron out some of the finer details I didn't quite understand. But apart from that, it was very uh, well made, well acted as well. Rufus Sewell is always pretty good in stuff. I'm not quite sure what m m some of the stuff he has been in. Uh, we got um, we got William Hurt, Jennifer Connelly as uh, Kiefer Sutherland. Uh, we've also got Richard O'Brien. Now Richard O'Brien is kind of. I mean, the, the acting is kind of suitably kind of weird for the film that it's like. I mean, Richard O'Brien is uh, is a weird enough looking dude kind of in real life, in a kind of real life, but in this he's really weird. He's like got this pale kind of makeup on. He's like really, really tall. He's bald, obviously. He's got these like these long, long fingers, kind of like um, those uh, monsters from that episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Hush, kind of those. Uh, Obviously not not quite as scary, but kind of like really weird, like like what they what they call kind of pale men, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, really well directed. You really kind of find yourself kind of immersed in this this science fiction type world. It's kind of like Earth, but it's nothing like it at the same time. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend it. Um, I believe it's kind of like early. I think I'm just looking because the credits are just kind of going on behind me. Um, and I think um, it was ninety three. Is it? I think. Um, and for some reason on the back it says um, 2003, which I'm guessing is when the director's cut was uh, kind of released. Uh, but yeah, I highly recommend this one. If you're a fan of films like Blade Runner or science fiction films in general, um, it's definitely, definitely worth a watch if you haven't seen it already. I uh, highly recommend it. Uh, it, it, it moves along at a, 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 a good pace. It is an hour, well the director's cut is an hour 50 minutes. so. Um, so it's not too long, but it's not too short at the same time. Really good length, I thought. Uh, the girth is pretty good as well. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, it might even be. I haven't actually seen The Crow, but it might might be um, my favourite Proyas film. Obviously, I've only seen that and uh, this and I Robots. So I can't really um, compare it to much to to many things. But um, but yeah, like I say, well acted. Uh, cinematography was absolutely gorgeous. Like it's all, it's all dark. There's a little bit of kind of like light stuff toward the end, uh, but it's mostly kind of a quite a quite a dark film, as you probably guessed by the title Dark City. But um, but yeah, it was very very worth definitely worth a watch. Um, again, if you haven't seen it, that's the first time me seeing it, and I really really enjoyed it. So yeah, that is Dark City. Now I don't know if I'm gonna be watching any other films today, but um, but I've still got tomorrow, and I am planning to watch a one uh, definite film tomorrow evening. Uh, I just didn't really kind of feel like watching the films yesterday, so my, my, back, my back's still hurting and stuff like that, so I'm not really kind of a, not in the kind of the film enjoying kind of mood yesterday. But uh, yeah, so I don't know what else I'll be watching, but when I'll know, you'll know, you know. Yep, here we are with a new film and on another new day. Yep, today is Monday. Uh, Dark City was the only film, uh, the only film I watched yesterday. It's just I didn't really feel like, any, like watching anything else. Uh, again, my back pain kind of flared up a little bit more, so I thought, well, there's no point kind of sitting there because I won't be able to focus on it properly. But I'm feeling a bit, feeling a bit better today, uh, so I may, may watch uh, two or three tonight. Uh, well, today it's about um, what time is it? It is currently uh, nearly four o'clock. Uh, so I am planning to watch a certain film uh, later on tonight. Hopefully, um, not 100% sure, confer not 100% confirmed, but I do want to watch it. Uh, but yeah, just come back from a uh, rather lengthy uh, shopping trip. Uh, I just felt like spending some money, and to be fair, I did spend quite a lot today. Um, so uh, yeah, I got a few Blu-rays, but the uh, one that I believe is a new release today, I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure it is. And I picked this up uh, from As from Asda for uh, was it two? Well, it was within a two for twelve pound offer. Uh, it's a brand new release. Um, now I don't know. If it's if it'll be any if it'll be any cheaper in uh, HMV, whether it'll be because it'd probably be to be honest, it'd probably be in the five to thirty. Um, but um, we'll see, I suppose. Uh, but I would have paid about the same same amount, maybe a little bit more. But um, but there you go. But yeah, the film I'm going to be watching uh, this afternoon is a film that I've heard nothing but again nothing but good things about. Um, it's uh, John Hughes' uh, 1980, uh, mid 80s uh, classic. 
I don't know what it is. Is it a drama? Is it just kind of uh, kind of a comedy or what? It's uh, a few things, I believe, and it is The Breakfast Club. That's right. I've never seen this film. Um, I don't know. It's just never was on my re re never really on my on my radar really it's not one of those films that i desperately wanted to watch like really quickly but uh i thought i saw it in there it was cheap still it's the 30th anniversary edition it's a brand new release like i said um uh, so yeah i'm also gonna be doing like a little unboxing as well now the only annoying thing is that as you can probably tell um i'm not a fan of this uh purple banner as you probably guessed by now um but yeah it's not it's not too bad um I wasn't exactly like not going to buy just because of that. I mean, I could have got the US edition, but it's exactly the same stuff, same features and everything. So I thought, what the hell, I might as well uh, get it now. Uh, so yeah, I'll do a little uh, unboxing as well. Um, I might give away the digital copy code, but I don't have any way to be quite honest with you. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, Amarino slipcover, unfortunately, but I don't think it would have come with one anyway. And uh, there is the uh, ultraviolet code on the other side of that. And uh, it's just simply the... Uh, the Blu-ray disc on that side. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to checking this one out. Like I said, I've heard nothing but good things about it. It's, um, it's one of those films that I believe people think that everyone should see, and I uh, I think it's about time I saw it. So, yep, so the next film up will be The Breakfast Club. So yeah, that was The Breakfast Club, and that is now one of my favourite films of all time. Yep, that is right. Just brilliantly well-written, brilliantly well-acted, funny, it's heartbreaking at times, very simple story. You've got a group of different types of student who come together for a Saturday detention. You got, was it the brain, the athlete, the princess, the criminal, the, I think, weirdo, played brilliantly by Emilio Estevez, Ali Sheehy, Molly Ringwald, Judd Nelson, and um, uh, Anthony, Michael, Anthony Michael Hall. Just a great, great cast. They really bring these characters to life. Again, John Hughes is an absolute genius, and I've just uh, kind of um, sad that he's not with us anymore because I honestly think that he is one of definitely one of the great greatest uh, kind of writers from the 80s now I don't know whether the film will have as much kind of relevance and resonance kind of now uh, compared to kind of what it was like in the mid 80s when it came out uh, but it definitely has lost its power it's, it's dated very very well I think some of it quite a lot of it is, is, is still relevant nowadays but not quite as much uh, got some really good standout scenes in there, including one um, kind of about, about an hour and a quarter into the, in, uh, into the film, where they're kind of like all sat in like kind of a circle, kind of telling each other um, how they um, kind of uh, came to be, kind of how they got a detention and kind of how they came to be together. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's just absolutely incredible film. Uh, not many films uh, do that do that for me. Uh, kind of, there's like one of my favourite films of all time on the first viewing. There was a few. There was. Uh, before Sunrise, Withnell and I, there aren't that many uh, films like that, but this is definitely one of them. Uh, what else is there to say? But yeah, I, I I know why, I now now know why it has that classic status. I love the fact that it's set in one place, uh, the kind of the events of one day, um, kind of characters that you kind of kind the kind of people that you wouldn't think would come together and they kind of play each play off each other really well like i say the the script is really clever uh, it really um i don't know it, it just kind of you know like the like i don't know i don't know how to explain it really but the characters are really really interesting you get to know some of their backstories uh I don't know, it just comes back to the to the fact that it's just really well written. Uh, John Hughes really had the pull, the pulse of the kids, I suppose you could say. Um, uh, but yeah, I honestly don't know why it's taken me this long to see it. Um, I know a lot of people are saying it is a classic, and I absolutely agree with them, hundred uh, percent. Five stars out of five, two thumbs up, ten out of ten, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, it's absolutely incredible film, and I'm just really glad I finally got to see it. But yeah, I, I could honestly wax lyrical about this film for about how, for hours, but um, I have other films to watch. Uh, now, I don't know what film I have to watch. I know there's this, this one film I need to, I want to watch later on, uh, but that might be the last one, possibly. I don't, I'm not quite sure. Um, but yeah, Breakfast Club, definitely uh, seek it out if you if you can. Uh, just beg, borrow, or steal to see it. You know, is it? I don't know if it's on Netflix or whatever. I'm not quite sure. But um, I picked it up for cheap. It would have been about six quid. So uh, yeah, and it's a new release. Uh, this I think it came out today. It might have been last week, but I think it is today. And uh, yeah, I did see a Weird Science as well. But I saw that well, there weren't any um, extras, list, extras listed on the back. So I thought 
it means weeks it was like a, a 30th anniversary edition but it's like what's the point is no extras on it but this one has a few it has a uh, i think they're kind of put it over from kind of all the dvd um versions of it um uh but yeah but yeah i said de de definitely seek it out like i said if you haven't seen it already i don't know why it's taking me this long to see it anyway and uh yeah definitely definitely you see it uh so yeah i don't know what film i'll be watching next and when but uh I guess we'll see in a bit, so uh, yeah. Yep, so here we have it, the last film of the day and of this marathon in general. And it's a film that I wasn't that enthralled on seeing um, after the uh, the last kind of non-superhero film this man made, uh, sorry, this director directed, um, which uh, made me feel stupid and, well, I am stupid, but I don't appreciate to being made feel to, to <clears throat> I don't appreciate being made to feel stupid. Uh, so I kind of wasn't that bothered. It's kind of, it's along the same lines, kind of a sci-fi thriller kind of thing. So I wasn't really that bothered to go to see it. Uh, heard a lot of good things, heard a lot, a lot of bad things, heard things kind of in, in the middle. And I wanted to check it out. Obviously, I'm not going to let the reviews kind of, uh, kind of sway me one way or the other. But uh, yeah, it's a film that I did not realise is this long. It is nearly three, it's like two, hour, two hours, 50 minutes, which I did not realise it was that long. And I was in second thoughts whether to kind of watch something else, maybe a bit shorter, but I'm going to stick it out. Whether I'll watch all of it, I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm going to try. And that film is, it came out last week, and it is Interstellar. Now this is the uh, Digibook edition I, bought, I purchased from HMV. Uh, last Monday and uh, yeah like I said I did not realize it was two hours 50 minutes I thought maybe like two and a half hours but not that long uh, so well, well it's, only, it's only really 10 minutes uh, but yeah because like after I saw Inception it just made me I just, I just it just made me kind of feel stupid and like I said I don't like being made to feel like I'm stupid but um, I mean that, that film is confusing anyway at least for quite a lot of people including myself so yeah I just didn't really kind of I didn't want to see it at the cinema, really. Uh, I know a lot of people, I um, can't remember going to see a film, can't remember what it was, and the trailer for this uh, was on, and I, I saw kind of the, uh, there was a lot of women sat, uh, sat next to me, and she kind of like, had her head down like that, trying to not look at what the trailer was. I was thinking, really, are you that, are you that bothered? But then I heard that the trailer is quite, is quite, is quite um, kind of gives away quite a lot of the film. But yeah, and it's a really nice digibook as well, really nice edition. Uh, yeah, I love the fact that it's the um, but the film and the special features are on separate discs, so it uh, leaves it a lot of space. Then you get a kind of uh, pictures from the film and stuff like that. I think you've probably seen it a few unboxings I've been, I think. Uh, but yeah, it's really nice. But yeah, like I say, it's turned out it's going to be a bit of a slog, but I'm going to do my best. Um, so uh, yeah, the last film of the marathon will be Interstellar. Well done, Mr. Nolan. I tip my metaphorical hat to you. That was incredible. Now, I don't think I understood it, but I loved it as a film. Uh, it is not perfect. The scenes, the scenes in it that I feel are better than the film as a whole. I so I don't understand it. I understand kind of the, the gist of it, but I don't know kind of the science behind it or the, uh, the thought behind it, really. Um, as, a film, as a filmic experience, I, re I seriously mucked up not seeing this at the cinema. It would have made an excellent uh, cinema experience. Better than Gravity, I think, as, as a film. Uh, visually, it's incredible. You know, the acting is spot on from everyone involved, from the, from the kids to the adults. Uh, it does... It, it's at times a bit heavy on kind of the um what's the word the kind of i guess like uh, like a commentary on the state of the world today whether i'm um kind of reading too much into it i don't know um but yeah definitely the best film best nolan film i've seen uh bar maybe dark knight possibly i don't know um but uh, it's, it's definitely my favourite of his um, films outside the, uh, Dark, the Dark Knight trilogy, definitely, by far. I haven't seen all his films. I still haven't seen Memento yet. 
There's, um, I think, one or two I haven't seen. Uh, like I say, I wasn't the biggest fan of Inception because it was just too complicated. But this got, I feel, got the, uh, what's the word? The, um, what is the word? The uh, kind of, it's like, it's like when I watch The Wire, it's like I don't quite understand what's going on at least three quarters of the time. But I just enjoy watching it for the for the ride, you know. For the like I say, visually it's absolutely incredible. Uh, the ambiguity, I think it gets, that's what I, I think it gets the ambiguity right. It explains enough, but not too much. So you you are th you kind of you think about it, but and it makes your bre it makes your brain hurt definitely. But if you kind of think about it a bit more, you kind of start to understand it. Uh, but yeah, I'll say, like, the, oh, it just, honestly, I, I love the uh, kind of, you know, where it kind of shifted between like, the, the IMAX scenes and kind of the, the actual scenes. I mean, this on an IMAX film, uh, on an IMAX screen would have been absolutely incredible. Uh, like I say, there are a few scenes that I think are better than the film, like the uh, the one, the very one, a very emotional scene when they kind of, uh, not going to give any spoilers, but when they come back from a mission they go to and they find all these... Um, or they get all these uh, kind of these messages from people back home. It's a really emotional scene. I actually cried watching it. I'm not ashamed to admit that. Um, the ending, again, I didn't quite understand, but it looked great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's uh, good or bad, but um, uh, but yeah, that's all I have really say about it. It will take maybe one or two other viewings to be fair it did it did not feel to like nearly three hours i will say that it seemed did seem long but not quite that long i mean minus minus credits it is actually more like just under an hour just under two and just under two and three quarter hours so it's not too bad really uh it has obvious i mean people will say that that, that it will have a uh, kind of little nods to like 2001 Space Odyssey and stuff like that but there's no ignoring it I mean they use the uh, the kind of the organ sound at the end of you know the intro for 2001 Space Odyssey they use that organ sound quite a bit in the film or at least uh, quite a bit of kind of like the, the space scenes and stuff uh, I do feel that the like the like the scene in space do outweigh the the other scenes but you can see how it all kind of all kind of connects uh, like I said the ending Kind of like the last, like maybe like twenty-five minutes. I didn't quite know what was going on, and um, I just don't think that kind of that not contributed to the story, but didn't detract from it. Didn't really, no. But it did add something to it because it kind of it sort of explained what was going on. But I was thinking, and it's like some scenes. It's like would would somebody actually do that? Is that actually possible? Is this right? Is this wrong? I don't quite know. It's but it's. Uh, it's just interesting to kind of find. I'm gonna kind of like re, uh, like read up on it because I didn't quite get some of the because some of the kind of um, kind of technical technical language that they use is quite hard to understand at, at, at times. And also at some points the the film is mixed very strangely. Like you can't hear some of the dialogue. Whether that's because they mumble quite a lot, I'm not quite sure. Or I've heard kind of other people complaining. I remember uh, kind of one of the main complaints of the film when people saw it in the cinemas was the fact that they couldn't kind of understand what was, uh, what people were saying because like the uh, like the music was louder than the dialogue or something. Uh, but yeah, I think next time I watch, it, I think I watch it with subtitles to kind of like uh, um, kind of take it in a bit more, kind of follow it a little bit easier. But yeah, Interstellar as an as a filmic experience, ten out of ten, five out of five. As a film itself, I'd give it a nine. I, I think. Uh, like I say, I do need to see it another couple of times. Whether I will do uh, any time soon, I don't know, because it is quite a hard slog, like I said, two and three quarter hours. But I might do, you never know. Uh, but yeah, that was uh, Interstellar. And that was my uh, Easter weekend uh, first watch kind of marathon. Uh, so yeah, I hope you, enjoy I hope you at least uh, semi-enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, so I'll go through the films I actually watched. So all the way back on Friday, I watched uh, 30 minutes or less really very funny um kind of comedy action uh it is the ending could have been a um, kind of um i don't know the ending ending it ended quite abruptly i think um but uh if it was a bit longer i think it would have worked a bit better i mean like it, like i say with credits it's only like an hour and 25 minutes so it needed a bit more not character development but needed, needed a little bit more to it i thought 
Uh, if it had been a bit longer, I would have liked it a lot more, I think. Um, but for what it is, it like I say, it runs at a brisk pace. Uh, you laugh. You don't all, you don't laugh all the time, but yeah, there's, a, there's a good few hearty laughs from me. And uh, and believe me, I'm quite hard to please when it comes to comedy these days. Um, I just think that it's like like crude just for the sake of it. But not this. It, when it was crude at times, but it didn't kind of um, didn't go over the top. I thought it got the, the balance quite right. Uh, the acting was well. The acting was serviceable. You know, it's not going to be like Oscar worthy in a comedy film, really. Uh, I mean, Jesse Eisenberg kind of plays the same character in more or less every film he's in. Um, uh, like I said, not the biggest fan of Nick Swardson, but he wasn't too bad in this one. And uh, Danny McBride, again, I'm not like like the biggest fan of his, but I don't like kind of dislike him, but he was, he was good in this, I thought. Uh, but yeah, so the first film up was 30 Minutes or Less. And the film after that was the was 1980, yeah, 1988 uh, classic Die Hard. Again, a film I'd never seen. Uh, but yeah, people uh, regard it as a classic. Uh, fair enough, I don't... I mean, I've only seen it once. I don't think it's quite um, kind of a classic for me, obviously, because I've only seen it once. But I think with multiple viewings, uh, kind of think about it a bit more, I will enjoy it a lot more. I mean, um, Bruce Willis kicks all kinds of ass as a John McClane. Then you got got uh, Alan Rickman as a Handel Gruber. Really great action scenes, easy to follow story. Um, it's nothing too involving, which I liked. There's nothing really I need to kind of concentrate on that much. Uh, but really, really loved it. Uh, well, I didn't love it, but I did really, really like it. And the second film was Die Hard. And the third film was a incredibly good film, uh, How to Train Your Dragon. Uh, I was actually going to buy the sequel today, but um, I decided against it. I think I wait, wait for it to drop down in price. But absolutely, inc really incredibly good, good film. Great animation. I say it was a bit kind of the animation was a bit kind of uh, kind of ragged at times, but um, like uh, like I posted like a little well like a tiny review on Letterbox saying it was pure entertainment, pure entertainment from start to finish, and that is definitely how I'd describe it. Uh, kind of like well not swashbuckling as pirates, but kind of really uh, just really fun. The script was great. It was funny. It was sad at times, and I heard the sequel is even better. So we will be seeking that out soon. Um, uh, but yeah, really, really good film, like I said. Um, so I'm kind of running out of things to say now. Um, but yeah, like, I've, like I said, for most of these films, um, I've watched some very good films over these past few days. Um, I'd say definitely give all give all these films a go. I enjoyed them kind of in on di kind of a, a differing differing levels, I suppose. Um, of course, some of the, a few of them are quite different from each other, which is which is good. Get a bit of bit of variety. Variety is the spice of life, as they say. Uh, but yeah, definitely give this work, give this one a go if you haven't seen it already. Uh, but I will say that it's about, about every film in uh, that I've watched these past few days. But yeah, that's How to Train Your Dragon. And then, oh yeah, those three were on uh, Friday. Then Saturday, I didn't watch any films at all. And then yesterday, no, hang on, Saturday. Yeah, yes, yesterday, which was Sunday, uh, the only film, the only one film I did watch was a uh, Dark uh, Dark City, very very good sci-fi action thriller. Uh, great acting, the kind of the the world that is realised is absolutely incredible. Um, again, like I mentioned before, it has obvious, um, well not similarities, but it has that kind of the Blade Runner sensibility, that kind of uh, that futuristic world kind of kind of vibe, which I really really liked. Uh, again, Richard O'Brien is absolutely creepy as hell in this. Uh, great story. Oh, by the way, I right this is it. I watched the maybe the first three minutes of the theatrical cut. What a load of bollocks that was! It explains the whole kind of twist in the first like two minutes. That's ridiculous. Apparently, I was reading up on it. Cause apparently, uh, uh, Alex Prius did want to kind of show the kind of what well, the director's cut is the is the version he wanted to show. But the uh, the powers that be, the studio uh, thought that the uh, kind of twist was too confusing, so they wanted to put like the it's like an opening narration at the beginning of the beginning of the film, uh, again, which compl explains the whole plot. Do not bother with the theatrical cut. Maybe watch it just for kind of uh, curio curiosity's sake. But if you want to uh, kind of watch the film as uh, as intended, definitely watch the uh, director's cut. The theatrical cut is absolute wank. I will say. Um, uh, in watch all of it, but I have heard it kind of omits quite a lot of um, kind of character development and um, kind of character interactions with, with uh, different characters. But uh, 
But yeah, if you like I say, if you're going to give this a go, watch the director's cut. Do not bother with the theatrical cut. It's absolutely bollocks. And the last film, <coughs> which I watched, uh, finished watching about 20 minutes ago, we had Interstellar. Very, very good uh, sci-fi uh, film, sci-fi flick. Uh, really, lo really, really loved it. I wish I'd have seen it at the cinema. It's long. Well, I was going to say along with uh, the Avengers, I would have uh, loved to. Uh, it's kind of the one film I regretted not seeing at the cinema. Uh, but kind of, you know, uh, <laughs> on reflection, not that bothered about Avengers. Um, but, uh, but yeah, very, very good film. It was going to divide a lot of people. Um, like I say, it was a bit confusing, but I didn't mind that. I was just, I was along for the ride, and the ride was very, very, very good, very emotional. Um, I loved the characters again. The ending, I didn't quite understand, therefore I didn't really appreciate it for what it might be. Um, but apart from that, absolutely, oh, dare I say it, a stellar film. Oh, Jesus, uh, but yeah, definitely give it a go if you haven't seen it already. Um, you will need to put aside quite a bit of time. Uh, be good to watch it with kind of other people as well. I, I would think kind of get a little bit of a uh, discussion and debate going. Um, but yeah, this is the uh, Digi book. Like I said, uh, it's really really nice. Um, I would have definitely um, uh, if I'd have uh, kind of seen the uh, Amore and this, I would have I would have uh, plumped for this. Uh, uh, 20 quid in HMV, Sainsbury's and I think maybe another couple of places and I think it's uh, 20 quid on Amazon as well. Uh, I don't know how limited it is but I'd definitely uh, buy it if if you want if you're going to get the film I'd definitely buy the digibook over the uh, kind of the, the regular Amore. Obviously if you're not that if you're not a digibook collector there's not much point. But um I really like it and uh, it's got a really nice kind of a uh, matte finish to it. Again I'm not going to explain the whole thing because you've probably seen a few unboxing unboxing videos uh, all over YouTube. So yeah. That was my um, oh, I'll find it. My Easter weekend uh, first watch kind of movie marathon. That's that's that, that that's going to be the title of the title of this video. Uh, trying to get these films in order for when I watched them. Uh, no, no, that's wrong. Hang on. <laughs> uh, that's wrong as well. Oh, give me a sec. Uh, no, that's not good. Um, hang on. That's the one. That's the one. So yeah, there are the films, so I saw the lighting's horrible in here, but it is like quite late or early, if you would, uh, uh, if it's, you know, probably will be uh, past 12am, uh, so it's actually Tuesday, probably, not, well, probably by now, uh, but those are the films in order of me watching them, uh, like, well, I think you'll agree, uh, a good variation, uh, very different films, but each, each of them great in their own way, and I've completely forgotten The Breakfast Club, that's embarrassing, um, <laughs> I just thought of that now, but yeah, oh yeah, I should explain that actually. Breakfast Club as well. Oh man, it's one of my favourite films of all time now. I need to watch it again. Um, uh, what else is there to say? But yeah, I explained uh, all of it. Like I said, I could talk about it for hours now, but I'm not going to because I am quite tired. And, um, and you probably uh, heard me rabbiting on for far too long already. I don't know how long this is going to be. Might start editing it tonight, maybe tomorrow. Or when I get up, I mean, uh, depending on what time it is now. But yeah, I also watched The Breakfast Club. I don't have the MRA with me at the moment, but uh, absolutely loved that film. Uh, like I said, it's one of, one of my favourite films of all time now. And uh, it's just an absolute classic, and I loved it. So uh, yeah, that's what I'll do for this video. So uh, not much more to say, really. So until next time, please rate, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.